Today we are making some serious progress on the Ultimate Workbench by adding dust collection and power and finishing off many of the storage functions of the bench. Many of these features will come together in this video, so be sure to stick around until the end to see it all pay off. My shop has a dedicated router table, so I decided to delete the router lift from the bench entirely. Not only does this reduce the overall cost of the bench, but it does simplify the dust collection and the power systems inside of the bench. One of the biggest organizational issues I have in my shop is not having a good place for everything to be. So I decided to make a dedicated drawer for my sanders and a cubby for my track saw. They're two of my most commonly used tools, so having them readily accessible is a game changer. For this cabinet, I actually modified the router lift cabinet that Travis details in the plans by moving the drawer up to the top and opening up the cabinet completely on the bottom. I kept this drawer exactly the same size and shape as the plans, that way it was really easy to flip it and build. The leftover space underneath the drawer was the perfect size for my track saw. This also kept the face frame easy to make. You could easily add a door to the track saw cubby or just leave it open. Yeah, this old wood glue her. I'm so close to finally killing an entire jug of tight bond. This is a legendary moment in any self-proclaimed woodworker's career. You'll build this cabinet the same way as all the others. Glue, nail, and screws. I had to shim my drawer slides using a quarter inch piece of plywood to close up the gap and get them to engage. You can turn the cabinet onto its side to help you install the drawer slides. After laying out my locations for the power strips, I drilled holes in each corner, completed the cut with a jigsaw, and then used a wood file to finesse the fit. Using a hole saw, I drilled a hole for the power inlet that will supply power to the entire workbench. Be careful not to push too hard. Your wrists will thank you. Ow. No. Ow. For the blast gates, you have to drill your own holes to attach it to the bench. I used my drill press to do this. Be careful not to drill too close to the blast slider or you may pinch it when you fasten it to the bench. Use the hole saw again to drill through the sides of your bench. Pocket hole screws work great to attach the blast gates. Believe me when I say there was literally no way to get a pleasing angle of me installing all the components inside the bench. So I apologize for a bit of rough footage here, but I'll do my best to explain. The back of the power strip has keyholes on it. Let me show you a great trick to transfer those locations to the bench. Take some painter's tape, masking tape, or whatever you have, and put a strip along the back side of the power strip. Massage the keyholes until they start to form a depression on the tape, and you can clearly see the outline of them. Then, mark a center hole using a marker, and stick the template onto the inside of your workbench. I used a center hole punch to mark the screw locations, that way I could remove the tape before installing the strip. Now, we will run the dust collection hoses and integrate the dust collector. As you can see in my infinite wisdom, I should have just waited to install the sander and track saw cubby. After nearly half an hour of messing around with it, trying to get the dust collection hose onto the blast gate, I ended up taking it out anyways. Do better than me. Don't be an idiot. This is the top-down view of the workbench. Without the router lift, the dust collection is actually very simple. Two blast gates, one at each end, connect using a Y to the dust separator, which then connects to the shop vac. Speaking of the shop vac, Travis recommends a vac master beast in the plans. However, after doing a little bit of research, I found what could literally be the exact same vacuum, but available under the Craftsman brand at Lowe's. At the time I bought this vacuum, it was on sale for $70, which is actually significantly cheaper than the VacMaster. I ran the longest run first and attached it to the blast gate using hose clamps from the Spect dust collection kit. I made sure to tighten these down really good, that way I never have to touch them again. It's best to cut the dust collection runs as short as possible. The longer the run is, the lesser suction will be produced at the blast gates. After installing the separator and the shop vac, it was time to plug everything in and test it out. It is imperative that you test everything before you close anything up. Once everything checked out, it was time to move on to the face frames, doors, and drawers. Following the plans, I milled all the pieces for the face frames, doors, and drawers using the table saw and the miter saw. Beginning with the deep drawer organizer, I attached the pieces of the face frame directly to the workbench using my brad nailer. I didn't have a lot of confidence in my face frames, so I did what Travis recommended and installed all the pieces of the face frame individually. I also didn't use glue in case I needed to take any pieces off or make adjustments, which I did end up having to do. I can't stress enough, the test fit is crucial. 
After all the face frames were on, I moved on to the drawer fronts. The plans call for a chamfer around all edges of the drawer fronts, which really does add a nice touch to the build. I'm relatively new to using router tables, and setting up the fence has always confused me for some reason. If you want to ensure that you get a perfect reveal, take a metal straight edge and push it flush up against the bearing of the router bit. Then bring your fence up against it. Push the straight edge against the bit and the fence against the straight edge. Then lock down your fence and you are good to go. You'll get a perfect reveal every time. I pre-drilled the hardware holes in all of the drawer fronts and doors, which is way easier than doing it later. This will also easily help you install the drawer fronts without any jigs or clamps. To install the drawer fronts, I used plywood and shims to create the reveals in the plan. Using pocket hole screws or cabinet screws, attach your drawer front to the drawer using the pre-drilled hardware holes. Then add screws to the inside to permanently attach the drawer front to the drawer box. You can then remove the screws in the hardware holes and drill through the existing holes to attach the hardware. A word of warning. The screws that come with the drawer handles are too short for the drawer boxes. You will need to get number eight by 32 machine screws in one and three quarter inch length, which are readily available at the hardware store. And just like that, the drawer fronts and the hardware are on. For the dust collector cabinet, I used the Craig concealed hardware jig to install the half inch overlay door hinges on the doors and mounted the doors to the workbench. I did have to add some spacers to both sides of the opening to pad the doors in appropriately. Now your workbench is ready for finishes or any final modifications like T-Track or end panel storage. If this is your first workbench video or you're interested in building your own, I've got a playlist of all my workbench videos right here.